The Snow in Kelm. This is a story about a man from Kelm named Gimple. But many called him Gimple the Fool. Gimple didn't mind, though, being called a fool, because he knew deep within that everyone acts foolish at times. Further, he believed there were two kinds of fools, those who know they are fools and those that think they are wise. Gimple felt fortunate to be one of the former. He figured that being called a fool would remind him how much more there was to learn. Like other fools of this type, Gimple was constantly trying to learn from his mistakes and spend time in the company of those with more experience than he. This is why Gimple volunteered to wash the windows at the shul every fole levone, the full moon, as this is when the elders met to discuss important issues regarding the shtetl of Kelm. Gimple respected the elders and would always try to be like a fly on the wall, well, actually the windows. When they met each month so he could absorb their great wisdom, the folks of Helm believed that the reason the elders were wise was due to their advanced age. But we all know it doesn't always work out that way. As a matter of fact, these specific elders were not as sharp as they once were, which was never as sharp as they'd like to believe. This particular meeting was happening on the full moon before the upcoming Hanukkah festival. The shtetl had a big party every Hanukkah and made latkes and applesauce and chocolates for all the people, no matter how poor. But this was a serious problem this year, as the treasury was empty after the town had generously helped pay for a new roof on the inn of the two brothers. The damage to the roof occurred following the brothers' most recent scheme to get rich. In their futile effort to capture the moon, the brother Reuven had jumped up and down with his net on the already aged roof, causing many shingles to crack. As Gimple cleaned the dirty windows, he listened to the elders fruitlessly trying to solve the town's financial woes. Lakish complained, Our village is poor! Tudris agreed, The coffers are empty. Gronum wondered aloud, Where will we get more shekels? As the elders droned on and on, Gipple noticed it was starting to snow. The temperature and humidity must have been perfect, for as the snow began to, to form beautiful crystals on the ground, they glistened in the light of the full moon. Gimple wanted to distract the elders from their negativity. He was thinking of the words of Rebbe Nachman of Breslov, try to spend a little time in natural beauty every day for your mental and emotional health. And in this spirit, he exclaimed, Look at how beautiful the snow is, how it shimmers in the moonlight. As though awoken from a trance, the three elders looked up, and as they looked out the window, first a look of surprise, and then a smile, and then excitement came to each of their faces. Lakish exclaimed, The snow is silver! I see pearls in the snow. Tudris corrected him. Pearls? I see diamonds. Gronin, the eldest, explained. It must be silver, pearls, and diamonds. It's a Hanukkah miracle. Hashem has heard our prayers. Like manna from heaven, a treasure has fallen from the sky. But soon... Their excitement turned to worry. Lakish reasoned, The people of Helm like to go walking. They will most certainly trample the treasure. Tudris demanded, What shall we do? 
They argued for some time, but could come up with no solution. Gimple, just trying to be helpful, offered to go around and tell the townsfolk to stay inside to give the elders more time to figure things out. But as though Gronum hadn't even heard Gimple, he stole the idea as his own. I've got it, he said. Let's send Gimple to knock on all the windows and let the people know they must remain in their houses until all the silver, all the pearls, and all the diamonds are safely gathered up. For a while, the elders were satisfied. They rubbed their hands together in approval of the clever idea. But soon a realization came to Gronum, and he cried out in despair, Oy vey! It's no good! Gimple himself will trample the treasure! But Lakish had a plan. Turning to Gimple, he said, I know! Gimple, sit in this chair, be a mensch! Now lift your feet in the air, so that you cannot trample the precious snow! But Tudris said, But if he's sitting in the chair, he won't very well be able to walk to people's houses and warn them. Gronum had a solution. What if we had more people to carry Gimple's chair so that he could be moved without his feet ever touching the ground? The others immediately saw Gimple's brilliance and clapping and congratulating each other with renewed excitement put the plan into action. Gimple sat upon the chair and each of the elders took a leg. Shmuel, the baker, who was making hollows in the kitchen, took a fourth leg. On top sat Gimple, grasping a wooden hammer in which to tap the villagers' windows, and off they went. Yet Gimple had a funny feeling. Something felt off. And though he couldn't put his finger on it, in any case, he felt important and did not want to ruin the moment, so he made sure to do his part to warn all the townsfolk on behalf of the elders, who continued to discuss the matter and offer up advice to Gimple as they huffed and puffed, struggling to carry the chair. Gimple knocked with a hammer and called out, No one leaves their house tonight. A treasure has fallen from the sky, and the elders of Helm have decreed that the jewels are not to be stepped upon. In fact, most of the people of Helm had already gone to sleep for the night, but upon being woken up and talking with Gimple, they happily agreed to go back to bed until morning. When they returned to the shul, the elders sat up late into the night. Eventually, as often happens late at night, their thoughts turned to their future fortunes. Gazing out the window at the falling snow, it was Lakish who raised the question. Once we have gathered the treasure, how shall we make the best use of it? Tudris had a proposition. Let us sell the treasure and buy a goose that lays golden eggs. Thus, the community will be provided for with a steady income. But Gronum had another idea. Why not buy eyeglasses that make things look bigger for all the inhabitants of Helm? Then the houses and the stores and the streets will all look bigger. And of course, a helm looks bigger. It will be bigger. No longer a poor village, but a big, rich city. Morning came and the sun began to rise. And when it was light enough to look out the window, alas, they saw that someone had trampled the snow. Gronum had an unusual and honestly rather unpleasant moment of clarity. We are such schmoes. Our heavy boots must have destroyed the treasure, he lamented. I don't know how, but somewhere in our calculations, we must have made a terrible mistake. Lakish wondered. Perhaps we should have all sat in chairs as well. Tudris countered. Oi, Gavalt, but then we'd be unable to walk to the houses. 
Akish realized the solution. We will need to get more folks to carry our chairs. Tudors confirmed, yes, four additional folks for each one of our each one of us. Gronum wanted to get it right this time, and being the most capable at his figures, did some calculations on a napkin. Well, if 16 folks carry our four chairs with us four folks in it, then these four can carry one chair with Gimple up on top. That's 16 plus 4 plus 1. We'll need 21 folks in all. If next Hanukkah, a miracle recurs and a treasure falls from the sky, that is exactly what we will do. All three elders were impressed with the math. They felt so satisfied and happy to be able to serve their beloved Helm with their hearts and with their minds. And when Hanukkah came, the townsfolk all agreed that even though the festival had to be scaled down due to the limited shekels, that the real riches were in the jo was in the joy of celebrating the seasons and the festivals together in their families and in their communities and in sharing what little they had with one another. Gimple continued to sit in and observe the elders of Kelm every month on Defole Lavone. While he washed the windows of the shul, he felt grateful that Kelm had such wise folks to guide them through difficult times, especially in this darkest time of year. Perhaps one day, he thought, even I could be wise enough to join their circle.